Um, we're going to start our first talk um, given by Patrick Karish, and he's going to talk about specifications. Thanks, Wim. Yeah, okay, hi. Um, specification pattern. Well, around my talk is called Boost Up Your Code with Specifications, but anyone heard ever about specification pattern or specifications? Okay, not much. So, what are specif uh, specifications? What are these? We go to specifications later. First, we should tackle the problem. Who is working with Doctrine, Propolo, or anything else? Oh, not much. So, the other half is doing SQL statements on your own, with PDO at least. MySQL comments. <laughs> oh yeah. I hope MySQL E. You don't have MySQL comments on. <laughs> okay, so an ORM. What's an ORM? It's an object relational mapper. And an object relational mapper maps your PHP object or model or entity, however you want to call it. In Docker it's called entity to a database table. To so simply database row table. So let's take a look at an example model. In this case, we declare a class Unicron which has an ID. We always need an ID, a primary key, and a unique identifier for database. And we have a name, of course, a unicorn should have a name, and a color. Why not? Birth date, okay. And it has laser horns. Maybe not. It could be true or false. And it poops rainbows, and it can fly, because unicorns must fly. So this is an example PHP class. It's simple, and the ORM configuration for Doctrine, proper, however, isn't shown yet, because it doesn't matter today. But if you have a unicorn class or a, any model you use, you want to save it to the database. So use your ORM to create this table with where ID is an int, varchars, tiny int for the booleans. So let's take a look at Klaus. This is Klaus. It's an awesome unicorn. So which property has Klaus? It's what? I don't know what you have. It can put rainbows, yeah. but it has not a laser horn, sadly. It would be more cool, but... So, we define Klaus, we create a new unicorn instance, name it Klaus, it's white, it's 30 years old. Please congratulate Klaus, it's his birthday today. <laughs> and, yeah, no laser horn, it poops rainbows and can fly. So, now we save it to the database. In this case, I use Docrin to parse it, and that's all. And it's this is Klaus, saved to the database, simple select on my SQL. So that's the basics of a URM. And now to the problem. In a URM, you have repositories. Who is writing repositories with advanced methods of you? Yeah, not that many. So um, what is a repository? The official, official definition is mediates between the domain and data mapping layers using a collection like interface for existing domain objects, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the official definition by Martin Fowler. So a repository class. It's a central class for your unicorn model, for any other entity, with all the find by methods, find by one, etc. So you don't use query builders in your controllers, in your services. You shouldn't do that. Who is doing that? Who creates query builders in the controller? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> and you can reuse criteria code, so you parts of the query builder within the repository class. So, but the problem of a repository class, it can grow. Let's take a look. You can have a find one by ID, so you can find Klaus by his ID one. You could find it by his name, to find Klaus by Klaus. <laughs> Yeah, by his name. Um, you can find all unicorn by a specific color, or find unicorns in its herd. So we have vacation here to the herd, or find a unicorn which are which can poop rainbows or not, depends of the parameter of the method. Or you can find one by herd and name. So you are searching clouds, but you want only find clouds in the lower herd, and you can find unicorns by herd and color. So you want to find all green unicorns, but only in this specific herd. Not every green unicorn. You can find by color with laser horns. 
and so on and so on. Who has counted the methods? No? Eight, yes. And that's not all. Every time you need another criteria, another combination, and so on, you have to create a new method, maybe refactor code, and so on, so on. Maybe you have 15, 20, 25 methods in a big domain model. That sucks. That really sucks. So, how we can do this? We use specifications. So, what are specifications again? It's called, more called a specification pattern. And again, the central idea of the specification is separate the statement from the candidate object. It's, yeah, still, same definition. So, separate the statement from the candidate object, that's the essence of a specification. So, you separate your search methods defined by one from the candidate object from the unicorn away. So, specifications are, in the sense, they are composable. You can combine them like you have done before in the repository. Uh, but specifications should be reusable. So you can reuse them, we will see later. And the important point is specifications should be testable. Such big repositories with 25 methods and so on are not really testable. So back to Klaus. We define a business rule for today, an awesome unicorn. The awesome unicorn can fly, of course, like Klaus does. It put rainbows in the first white. That's an awesome unicorn, and that is a business rule. And to define this specification, uh, sorry, this business rule into a specification, we can create a simple class called awesome unicorn, which implements a specification interface. The specification interface is yours. The only method it has is is satisfied by. In this case, we are using is satisfied by by unicorn instance, and can the test the unicorn instance on its method, can it fly, can it put rainbows, and if the color is white. It either returns true or false. That's all about a specification class. Any questions to it? Does it look simple enough for specification class? That's fine. The only part is we get a unicorn instance, which means it is testable but not reusable, because we only have a unicorn instance. You want to test a turtle against an, okay, awesome unicorn, you won't test turtles, but you can't test it on a, yeah, yeah, you can't test it on a turtle. And of course, it's not composable. How you can combine it with and and or? So let's add some compose methods, like and x. So we combine our specifications, this, with an end specification class to the sublight specification. Or we can use an or x method and not. And how, this is how you can compose specification classes. You create another specification, end specification, or specification, negation specification, which combines another specification classes. How we can use it? It's simple. We create a new awesome unicorn specification and combine it with a youngster specification and, of course, with a new laser horn specification, not. It's not naturally readable because the negation is afterwards, but it's more readable than SQL statements or repositories. And to test, if this unicorn instance satisfies this specification and is an awesome young unicorn, we simply supply the unicorn to the is satisfied method. That's all. In this case, maybe it's an awesome young unicorn. Yeah, the pros of this. It's solid. It's a simple class. It's reusable. It is separated from the repositories. It's separated from your models. It's unit testable. Or anyone disagree with that simple class? It's unit testable. And, of course, composable. Maybe you're asking why we should add and x or x or not methods. We could do this outside with a if too. Yeah, it depends how you like it. Okay, it still has some cons. It could be clearer. Writing big ifs in a return statement is not that nice. And of course, as I said, it's only usable on a unicorn instance. So specification pattern is cool. But writing it on your own sucks. 
So use rulers. Rulers is a real awesome library. Simply install it with Composer. And the features is it doesn't use if statements. It uses a data agnostic DSL uh, domain specific language to express our business rules, which means you write the instance level as we have done before and now it gets awesome it works directly at the data source level with docker and propyl and so on so first let's instantiate a rulers engine we need a file compiler because somehow has to parse our business rule this is the compiler it doesn't matter how what you use you can use only the hover parser at this time or you preferably define your cache here you need to clear it after deployments or if you have changed the business rules. And then we create a new rulers with the compiler. Say we want to support doctoring query builders and we want to support array visitor. We see later what's the difference between these two. Okay. Anyone using Symfony? Cool. So require the rulers panel. Configure it, arrays supported by default, but if you want to use Doctrine, configure it to use it, that's all. And get rulers from the service container. No more stuff to do. Cache directory is configured to the Symfony cache, you can, it's cleared with the Symfony cache and so on. So, let's get back to our awesome Unicom business rule. Yeah, here we have the rule. It doesn't look like the class before. Doesn't matter now. So we have the rule. Can fly is true, and poops rainbows is true, and color is prepared parameter color. Looks like SQL, does it? Not that much difference, and that's nice, because it's the domain specific language. It's not really SQL if you use custom function and so on, but if any developer looks at it, each, every developer can understand it. And that's really nice. So we ask rulers, if the unicorn instance satisfies this rule. Of course, we have to supply the parameter for color, it's white. We could encode here, we could use the color and write it statically here in the rule. It depends on you, how you prefer it. And rulers says, is it true? It satisfies this rule or not? But you don't want to clutter your code with rules, with business rules all over the, your code base. So. Again, we create a specification class. In this case, it's an awesome unicorn class which extends an abstract specification. It's a class supplied by rulers. You could also implement the specification interface again, but the abstract specification has some methods for you, helping you like the and x, or x, and not. And again, here we have our business rule. This is the only um, position in your code base where this business rule is defined. In any other part of your code, you use the specification class. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, still stuck with this microphone. <laughs> um, yeah, same rule, same parameters, color white. And this, as I said, is a data agnostic DSL to express our business rule. For every business rule, for every rule you want to use, you create one specification class, write the rule, write parameters. Of course, this can be uh, internal property supplied by the constructor, no problem. It's the same usage. We create a new awesome unicorn instance and combine it with a youngster and with a laser horn knot. But now we ask rulers, is the unicorn instance, uh, is the specification satisfied by this unicorn instance? So, is it on some young unicorn or not? Rulers tells us. So, it works on the instance level. But, if you have big database of unicorns, <coughs> thousands, ten thousands, you don't want to fetch ten thousands of unicorn in the memory. You want to filter on the SQL level, on the database level directly. No problem. In this case with Doctrine, we create a query builder, select unicorn from the unicorn table, and ask rulers to filter this query builder with our specification 
and we get back an array of unicorns which satisfies our specifications. So in this case, rulers is building a query builder for you out from your business rules. And it works on the data source level, which means performance, 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 performance. We don't want to fetch 10,000 unicorns in the memory estate. Okay, everything as promised before, but reusability. In this case, we have a name specification and a rainbow pooping specification, which we combine. We are asking rulers to filter our query builder against our spec and get to the first one. And we have Klaus, because it's Klaus and Klaus poops rainbows, of course. And now we get the herd of Klaus. It's a simple doctrine association and ask rulers to filter against the rainbow pooping specification against the herd which is returned by class. So the same specification, rainbow pooping spec here and rainbow pooping spec here is used against a unicorn instance and a unicorn data source and herd data, uh, in this case, herd instances. So it's reusable on every array query builder instance of a unicorn. It doesn't matter where you use the specification, you can use it. We create it only once and use it on multiple sources. In this case, I was sorry, the herd returns still an array of unicorns. So you uh, reuse it on a query builder, reuse it on an array of unicorns. Okay, the same goes reusability on different types. We have a name spec Klaus. Klaus could be a unicorn. So we get an array of unicorns named Klaus. A Klaus could be a turtle. So we are filtering array of turtles against to get all turtles which are called Klaus. The same specification is used on different instant array, instant typed arrays. So it's reusable on any class with the same properties which are asked in the business rule. Of course. In this case, you have to design your domain, your models clearly. You can't have name and title in two different properties and expect to reuse your specifications. As seen, this is our name specification. We have a get rule with name is, of course, the name, and return the parameter, the preview of this name. It comes from a constructor, a river, it doesn't matter. And class unicorn has a name property, and turtle must have the same name property. Otherwise, it wouldn't work, especially on some fields like birth date or date of birth. This is really important to design your domain. Another cool feature of rulers are custom functions. In this case, I created an H specification, H stack, where the rule is birth date is ah, yep, birth date is over age and age is a parameter sublight. <coughs> so I want to do it simple. I want to, don't, I don't want to do date time math in my daily code base. So the date time math is done by the custom function age. And it's a custom function, so we must define it for every executor, array visitor, dogram builder, and so on. Let's take a look how we do it. This is an array age operator. <coughs> it's simple a uh, callback class with invoke where we get the age, it returns the take time, and simply returns the take time from the A minus age years. So if we supply 30, we get the date time, the exact date time 30 years ago. And this age operator is simply on the array, defined on the array visitor, age is the new array age operator. So if we have the business rule before with the age, we can now use this rule with arrays of unicorns, of turtles, etc. Of course, but we don't have only arrays to filter, we also have a doctrine, query builder to filter. So we have to create an array age operator for doctrine. It's simple, we have a doctrine age operator, and in this case we have to do some doctrine math. If you don't know DQL from doctrine, it doesn't matter. In this case I use the current date and subtract the age times 12 as months from the current date. Doctrine doesn't support subtracting years, so I have to calculate with months. And this is 
directly a DQL statement returned for dot green query builder. In this case, because it's DQL, we have to do an inline operator, HNU, and so on, and supply it to the ruler's engine. It's only important for you if you want to create custom functions, but it's nice to get help with custom functions in the business rule. Don't do date time math every time. Maybe you want to use string length in your business rule. Well. There are many possibilities why you want a custom operator. Yeah, joins. Joins are nice. So in this case, we have a herd specification, which is basically asking the herd property on the unicorn, it's for a unicorn, and the unicorn has a herd association, and asking the name of the associated herd is the same name I'm searching for. And this is how you use it. You simply create a unicorn query builder as before. Rulers automatically detects you are asking for a join if your mapping is okay, and filters all herds in this case, which is named Adams. Maybe you have a unicorn herd named Adams family. Yeah, of course, this works only for Doctrine or M, not for Propel or Laravel Eloquent. Maybe you can create a pull request for it, but it's nice. In this case, it's auto-detected, but you can also supply inner join, left join, right join if you want, and rulers use your defined join too. Any questions to rulers so far? Yeah? What about getters and setters? Because you have public properties in the past. Okay, the question is why I didn't use getters and setters. Because it's an example. No, I'm saying, does it have yeah. a limitation? Does it match by the no. name or what? It, basically, under the hood, it uses Symphony property accessor. It works with public properties and it works with getters, setters, if they are present. That's not a problem. It was only for the example to no. keep the code rod. Yeah. Not a question? So basically, yeah. Pardon? Group is not supported. I created some special function to group that, but it was really, uh, it was really ugly to do that. So let's take a look under the hood. This is the basic architecture of rulers, which means your rule gets passed by a parser and compiled into an intermediate representation, or called AST abstract syntax tree, by an awesome library HOA compiler. And this intermediate representation is compiled to PHP code, SQL queries, Elasticsearch queries, which means on runtime, nothing is parsed again. If your rule is parsed once, it's compiled effectively to PHP code. In, for example, this is our awesome unicorn rule, can fly through and poof rainbows and so on. It's compiled to PHP code. And this is reused every time you use the awesome Unicorn specification. So don't worry if you write big strings as business rule, it's really performant because it gets compiled. And here you can see we use array access for you and in the backend this is Symphony property accessor. So it doesn't matter if you use getter, setters or public methods because if you have a simply domain transfer object, you don't need getters and setters. And this is the cache doctrine target of our herd spec. So rulers detect the joins to the herd association and uses this with get join alias target herd herd dot name and so on and so on. Yeah. So available targets. We have seen some of them already. It's you can filter on an array of arrays, which mean you don't have to grade objects or models. Unicorn could also be a two-dimensional array with array keys as the properties. Yeah, array of objects as we have already had, an array of unicorn instances or turtle instances, doctoring or query builders, and now you get awesome for who's who you are using doctrine. You can still fill, use POM and filter POM models or for the Laravel guys, you can filter with Illigrant. 
So for every one of you, it should work. And about reusability, it's really nice. You can filter Elasticsearch and Solar servers. So you have one specification where you can first look into Elasticsearch, like a product specification where you are searching for a specific product. Search in Elasticsearch before, because it's more performant than to search in MySQL. If you don't find anything, then search in the database with the same rule. It doesn't matter the data source you use, you always use the same specification class to filter your stuff. Yeah, and of course you can build your own executor, like in our company we use, yeah, sometimes everyone wants to write his own ORM, we have one in our company, so I had to create an executor to filter our own ORM, and it's ugly. Uh, my, I mean, our ORM is ugly, Creating a visitor for your custom stuff is nice. Maybe if you have a graph API, you can create an execute to the filter graph API. That would be cool if anyone does. So I'm going fast. Oh my. Yeah, a few use cases. We can look at the repository before. We had to find one by ID, by name, and so on, which are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten methods by now, and many more. We don't want to use this, and we, cause we have tamed the repositories with rulers, which means we have one matching method on the repository. Oops. Matching against a specification, any specification you have, it doesn't matter. Of course, the specification you use here must match against the model with the rule, otherwise you get an exception. And we create a query builder, unicorn local, and, of course, in this case, it looks like a unicorn repository has to be a service. No problem, because we have a this rulers instance. And asking rulers to filter our internet variable against the sublet specification. That's all. Not more. Every repository can look like this. Okay. But we still have a little problem here. And you can't, one can think about the problem here. No, this chop of doctrine. Of course, but that's part of the domain modeling. In this case, what if you have one million unicorns in the database? And have a really simple specification, maybe you want to get all rainbow pooping ones, and if you have one million unicorns, maybe half of them can poop rainbows? and you get a result, half a million unicorns, that's performance, yeah? That's a problem. In this case, my, sorry, to be fair, this is simple as fuck. <laughs> it's really simple. Three lines and that's all. Spec to one, uh, one million unicorns. In this case, I want to use pagination. So I create the grill builder and ask ruler to apply my filter specification on it and get back again a query builder and not the result already. Now I can do with the query builder anything I want. In this case, I set the first result, set max result to do pagination, to apply a pagin doctrine paginator on it. And now performance problem is, there's no performance problem anymore if you use pagination. Because on every side you use pagination. You want maybe, if you have a list view, you want to show only 100 unicorns and then on the next set 100 unicorns and not half a million ones. So you need a paginator, and that's not a problem, because instead of filter spec, you use apply filter spec and get back your query builder. This works for Laravel and Palm 2. Another example where I get into touch with rulers was this search form for a retailer search. We are searching for the country, and the country region, or in zip code. And we have a search for a keyword and some special assortments of the products. And in this case, I used rulers to map each of the form field to one specification object. Because country, country, maybe, is a simple rule. Country zone is a complex rule with joins and so on. So I could combine a country specification and country zone specification or keyword specification. In the code, it the controller code, the filter service looks really small because the big business rules of this 
of each field is encapsulated in a specification class. And what's nice again, specification is a class. So why a specification shouldn't be an uh, entity too? So for the assortment, I have an assortment entity, assortment model, which is our own ORM, doesn't know, and implements a specification, which means it is saved into the database. In our CMS, the editor can define the business rules. This is saved in these rules. It's the textual business rule saved in the database by the CMS editors. And name, doesn't matter, it's for the backend. So, yeah, name, rules, it comes from the backend, it comes from the database. Your business rules from the database, why not? So, the local part is, the local ID is in set of assortments. This is in set is a custom function. And, of course, if the rules aren't empty from the editor, we combine it with OR and return it. So, we have a specification from the database, from the editors. That's nice. And this is used for the assortments. So our CMS editors can create, add, and move assortments to filter the retailers on this map search. Another nice use case is Wallabag. Who has heard about Wallabag? Nice. Um, Wallabag is like, yeah, it is used to save articles on the net, internet and you can't read it here really, it has some tags. And these tags are taking rules from rulers. So reading time is lower equals five. This is a ruler's business rule. So here again, you define business rules in the database and use it then as specifications. Yep. No, but you could create one, an LDAP visitor. Would it be nice? But what would be your use case? That's a nice idea. Maybe you can create a visitor and supply it to rulers. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was going fast, too fast, seems, but now we have an plenty of time for questions. What exactly the unit tests here? I mean, because we started with unit testing, then we start fetching data from DB, and then we ended up storing the rules in the DB. So, what do exactly unit test here or do you test? I mean, uh, or not? Just asking. Uh, sadly, we can't unit test these rules. We do integration tests because you can unit test a rule against a race, but not against the data source. There, you have to do integration tests. So we are on one level higher on the integration behavior testing level. Yeah? If you wanted to introduce caching in the middle, where would you put uh, caching? Would this happen? If we want to introduce caching in the middle, what do you mean <laughs> with caching in the middle? So like for instance with the repository, for instance you could put caching there. So if you want Caching which is better. Um, if I understand the question correctly, you can still use, for example, doctrine query cache result cache. That's no problem, because apply filters back. You get back the query builder and can set re use result cache and so on. And the other caching layer would be in the controller, the page cache of the controller. And what? is already cached is the business rule which get compiled down to PHP code, DQL queries, Elasticsearch queries. This is already cached. But this is not a cached result, it's the cached business rule. Yeah. A way to all the results? Um, with the result, you can do anything you want because the result is mostly an array of your instances. Like, uh, ordering, sorry. Sorry. Order by. Yep. How you want it to use 
create query builder, add the, the order by method, and then filter or apply filters back and then use the query builder to add order by, group by, and so on. Ordering, grouping is not defined in the business rule. That's a matter of your repository again. So you are filtering the query builder or apply a filter on the query builder for filtering with this business rule, but ordering, grouping, having or whatever, limiting, pagination is a case of your query builder. They get compiled on the first execution. There's no warm up script to fetch all your specification in the code base and compile it beforehand. So, for an um, awesome Unicorn specification, the compiled PHP code is created on the first time you filter on this specification. But then it's reused every time. Yeah, after the first execution, each compiled specification is reused. That's the part of the performance. Another some questions? <laughs> so please, you find the slides on fourth time specs, and please give feedback on joined in, and maybe for the fourth time conference on fourth time minus feedback. So thank you. <laughs> As this was fast, you can all get on your Twitter and follow me, and yeah. Take a look at our company site and so on. Thanks.